Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I got a video for you that is yet another customer request. Um, but this time today, what we'll be going through is how you can, similarly to how I showed you how you can extract data from Spark and bring it to Cassandra or any of the other specific integration videos. Um, today, we're gonna be looking at how you can use Airflow to both integrate with Oracle, retrieve um, some data from an Oracle database, and then import it into a Postgres database. Um, so what's a little bit tricky about these is both of these you'll need to use a hook for instead of just a standard operator. Um, so it's gonna be wrapping it in a Python operator. Um, and they're, Postgres is really easy to interact with. Oracle databases definitely get a little finicky. Um, so I'm gonna be showing you, you know, hey, first just how you can set up your Airflow environment, how to connect to both services, and then I'll show you how you, we can extract some data and bring it into Postgres. Um, so without further ado, let's get started, let's get into it. Um, and at, again, at some viewer requests, um, I'm starting these videos now all the way from the start. So the first thing we're gonna do is just create a new directory. So we'll just call this Oracle Postgres, um, and then we'll just CD into it so we can uh, initialize a new Airflow environment. So then I'll use good old Astro dev init to create a new Airflow directory within here. And then I'm just gonna open it up within my code editor. So desktop, data guy video repos, cause I am an egomaniac now it seems like. Um, and then open up terminal again. I'll use this in a second, but we can ignore it for now. Um, and the first things that we're going to want to do here are actually import a couple different packages. Um, so to do this, we'll or need to go over to our requirements file um, and bring in a hook for Oracle and a hook for Postgres. So the Python operator obviously is already baked into uh, Airflow by default, but we will need to bring in the Oracle and the Postgres packages. So if you're not using uh, Astronomer or you're just running Airflow another way, you can also, that's why I wanted to show you here, you can also just pip install these packages. So whenever in any of these videos, when I'm bringing a package into the requirements file, that's the equivalent of just pip installing it in my Airflow environment when I create it. Um, so nothing really fancy here, but just wanted to show you kind of what, or just explain what's happening there. Cause I realized I don't think I have before. Um, and so these are the only two packages you'll need to download. I just have them locked because that's what it recommends on the Astronomer Registry, um, which is where I got these. So I'm going to stick with the latest uh, stable versions um, instead of unpinning them. So that's why I have the double equal sign and then specific versions here. Um, and so then now that I've gotten my Airflow environment set up and not fully set up yet, but I've got the packages that I need to be installed so far, I can run Astro Dev Start and start my Airflow environment. So here, just running Astro Dev Start. Um, and then what this will do, you can see it's gonna build my uh, Docker file and then start running Airflow locally using the Astro CLI. So that's that uh, Astro Dev init, Astro Dev Start. So while this is starting up, um, since we don't have any DAGs yet, we might wanna create those as well before we actually um, go into the Airflow UI. Um, so what we'll do here is just go into uh, our DAGs folder and we'll create a new file. So we'll just call this Oracle to Postgres.dag. Um, and then what we'll do is import some of our packages. So obviously we're gonna need to import the uh, Oracle and Postgres hook that we just used. So here, um, and I don't know why I wrote dot .dag, that is a silly little mix up. So not dot .dag, dot .py. That is, you can see the uh, afternoon coffee has not taken effect yet. Sorry, folks. Um, so here, after we've gotten our hooks, uh, our Python operator, we've got just the Airflow DAG object and date time. We are then going to define getting data from Oracle. So our first step obviously is extracting our data from Oracle. So here, we're just gonna use a typical Python task. Um, you could also use this using the uh, Taskful API. Don't really into actually, you know what? I am going to do that. So one sec, let me let me update this. So I had initially written this using just kind of the TI X compiles, but really since we're actually wrapping these in Python functions, we can just use the Taskful API. Um, so beautiful little use case here. So Taskful API makes just passing data a lot easier, where I don't have to now push it from, or I'm still returning, but I don't have to pull it into my next task. So I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So here in this get data from Oracle task, we're just going to set create an Oracle hook using our connection ID that'll to show you how to define in the UI in a second. Um, then we're going to pull our data. So select all from your table. And so you could parameterize this by you know, adding a table name equals, uh, let's say, you know, my table. 
and then doing Jinja templating to go into. This is how you would do that. Um, table name. Awesome. And so this is where if you wanted to, you know, just do it dynamically or you wanted to feed this a list and map it over um, here, you could use this and some Jinja templating there. And I'm sure it looks like to map multiple files as well. But then, so we've gotten our data from Oracle, we're extracting it, um, getting it as a pandas data frame, um, and then returning data to dictionary. So um, here, all we're doing, and I also just forgot I need to import the task decorator, so we're not using the Python operator anymore, so just save that. Um, so here, we are going to now take our data that's returned to a dictionary. So while you could use, uh, or you couldn't use, the Astro SDK would support you passing the data just as a pandas data frame, but unfortunately, because it's an Oracle database, it's not compatible with the Astro SDK. Um, so we're stuck just kind of using traditional Taskful API here. Um, and that requires us to convert it to a dictionary because the Taskful API does not support pandas data frames by default. Um, and then after that, we're going to create our second task, which is actually just inserting our data into our Postgres table, where we're going to reference data. So this return data value as a dictionary. Um, and here we're going to create a Postgres hook with our Postgres connection, which again, I'll show you how to define, and then insert these rows into your table. Um, and this again, you could swap it out to use my table, uh, table name using Ginger templating. So super useful tool here. Um, or sorry, not super, just, but also sim super simple DAG. Um, Task API really makes this a lot easier um, than what I initially had planned. So here with DAG, Oracle to Postgres, just set a start date, define your output from your data, get data from Oracle task, save as data, and then feed that into insert into Postgres task. Um, so now that we've built our DAG, we can uh, go open it up in the Airflow UI and take a look and also set some connections because those are pretty crucial for this. So here we are, Airflow UI, handy dandy. Um, and so we can see our DAG rendering fine here, but we will actually need to have some connections defined for it to work. Um, so here, what we're going to do is first create our Oracle connection because we're going in Oracle, in order, sorry, not Oracle. Um, and fun fact about the data guy, I actually started my career at Oracle. Um, and so because we define or reference the Oracle connection just as Oracle default in our DAG, we'll call it Oracle default again. Um, and then super helpfully, Oracle does not provide any guidance on which are necessary. So that's what I'm here to help you with. So the way I figured this out was actually going into the source code for the Oracle hook uh, on GitHub. So if you go in here, you'll see that you need to have a connection ID. Um, so obviously that we already said, you can specify if you want to use uh, thick mode. Um, so if you use true, you have to have the Oracle client library installed. So just use false, have it leave it on the default. Don't mess around with anything you don't need. Um, and then you'll also see here, you have your connection ID, your connection name type. Um, so scrolling down here into the get connection. So you can hear this is where it's pulling out the connection details. This is where I can figure out what you actually need. So you'll need a uh, address, Product, so your host, your port, your uh, SID, um, your schema, which is actually going to be your password likely. Uh, it might not be, but typically it is your password. And for me, it was um, your username and password. Um, and this should be all you need. Um, so if you go over what this looks like in the connection screen is you'll have your host, you'll have your schema, which will be your username. Sorry, not password, I messed up there. Your, log, your login, which is again, your username, whatever your password is, obviously. Um, and then you'll need to have a port number. So, you know, five, four, three. Um, and then you'll also need some extras. Um, so if you go in here, you'll need to have a ginger, sorry, uh, my bad. Um, so you'll need to have your SID, uh, your SID and your DSN. Um, so not a super intuitive, you know, your username is your SEMA, your everything else, I mean, your host, everything else is okay. Um, but I guess it makes sense. It's your SID is, you know, it's your site identifier and Oracle is super old school. Um, so after you've gotten that, you can save it. Um, if you try to test it, it won't work. Um, so just heads up there, it'll only work when you actually run the DAG. Um, and you'll also need to create a Postgres uh, connection. And this one luckily is a lot easier. So if we just uh, Postgres, um, call this again, Postgres, default, um, we can go into, uh, so here, so I'm just running, I'm just using my local Postgres instance. So what this is going to be is just 
uh, Postgres uh, public, I believe. Yeah, public, Postgres, Postgres, and then your port is whatever port you're running it on. So by default, Astronomer runs uh, it on the port 5432, um, and you should be all set. Um, and let me just double check that this is right. Yeah, host is Postgres. So then once you're all set, we can activate our DAG. So I'll do that right now. So here, if we go into the DAG menu, very simple DAG, just gets the data from Oracle and then inserts it into Postgres. Uh, so if you go over to your Postgres database, uh, you will see your data. Um, and that's really all I have for you today. Um, that was all there really was to this. So just wanted to make this video to help out that viewer that needed it and hope it helps out some more of you that were, maybe you weren't experiencing the same issue um, or the same uh, challenge, let's say. Um, so without further ado, data guy out.